So let's take a closer look at what has been installed. You will also learn in this video how to turn the ColdFusion server on and off and how to access the ColdFusion administrator. So let's go to the Finder if we are on the Mac. You can also use, of course, the Windows Explorer if you are on Windows. And here I will go to my Applications folder. On Windows, this is the C Program Files folder. And so after the installation of ColdFusion Builder, you should see a folder for ColdFusion Builder. And inside of that folder, there is one thing that I would like to point out. It's that ColdFusion folder that is here. Now you have that folder because you have chosen to install the ColdFusion server that comes bundled with the ColdFusion Builder. If you did not tick that box during the installation of ColdFusion Builder, you will not see that ColdFusion folder here because the ColdFusion server will not be installed along with ColdFusion Builder. This is not a big problem. You can install ColdFusion server a part of ColdFusion Builder. In that case, that ColdFusion folder will be located somewhere else in your Applications folder if you're on the Mac or in the Program Files folder if you are on Windows. But here, it is there because we have installed ColdFusion Server and Builder with one installation. Inside of that ColdFusion folder, we have a configuration folder, the Java runtime environment here, but the main folder here is CFusion, that is the ColdFusion, the actual ColdFusion Server application. Among those folders and files here, those are the folders and files that make ColdFusion work. But one of them is very important for us, is the www root. And this is the web root of ColdFusion server. So the files and folders that you want ColdFusion to serve to the browser must be located here. Of course, advanced users may configure what we call virtual hosts, which means the ability for ColdFusion to serve files and folders that are located outside of that web root somewhere else on your machine, on your computer. But this is an advanced topic that we won't cover in this Getting Started course. So now that we know where ColdFusion Builder and ColdFusion Server are located, let's execute ColdFusion Builder here. And the first thing that ColdFusion Builder asks me is to choose a workspace. Now, this is really nothing to worry about. This has to do with how the underlying Eclipse installation works. So we will keep the default uh, workspace here and click on OK. And ColdFusion Builder will now open a very nice welcome page that I will close right away here because I don't really need it. There we go. And here is the ColdFusion Builder environment that you will work with. Now notice here at the bottom of the screen, you have a CF servers panel with one ColdFusion server, which is called default local that is already defined. This has been automatically defined during the installation because we have installed Builder and Server together. If you decide to install Builder and Server as two separate installations, that CF servers panel will be empty and you will have to manually connect your ColdFusion Builder to your ColdFusion Server. Notice two things here. You might have more than one ColdFusion servers defined here in ColdFusion Builder. You might have a staging server, a production server. You might have different versions of ColdFusion installed. By default, we have one default local here, server. And to create another server definition here in ColdFusion Builder, you will just click here on the little plus to start a new ColdFusion server setup in Builder. So let's cancel that. And now we'll turn on that ColdFusion server. You see it is stopped at that moment. So I select it in the CF servers uh, panel and I click on the run icon here on the start server, which is that play icon. There we go. And we will wait a little while for the ColdFusion server to turn on. There we go. So after a little while, you see in the console that the server is available. And if you go back to the CF servers tab here, you see that now the server is running. So let's go to the browser. And in the browser, I will type the address of the server, which is localhost. It's running on my local machine and ColdFusion listens to port 8600. So when I do that, I reach that page, which is a directory listing for slash. Slash is the web root. So if you compare it to the web root of ColdFusion, you should see pretty much the same content. You have the CF scripts 
folder which is right here in the browser you also have cfide which is here in the browser and you have crossdomain.xml which is also present here now the web inf is a special folder that contains the main here in web.xml the main settings of this Fusion application so this folder here has been hidden from the browser which is a good thing so let's go to cfide here in the browser and let's compare that to the content of CFIDE in the Finder or in Windows Explorer. You see it's the same thing, so all the files and folders that you have here are also here located in the browser. Now let's browse the administrator of ColdFusion and this is the entry point of the Adobe ColdFusion administrator. Notice the URL here, probably you want to bookmark this URL because you will have to go back to this administrator quite often, so let's add it to the bookmark and now let's log on to the administrator using the password that you have chosen during the installation of builder and server and welcome to the ColdFusion administrator so here is the welcome page to return to that welcome page you need to click on this icon here at the top right of the screen which is called resources and here you will find a lot of links to ColdFusion resources, to the ColdFusion documentation, to community resources and so on. So if you get stuck one day, just go back to that page and you will have links to many different resources. Something else that might be of importance is the I icon, which is just next to it. It's the system information. And this will give you information about the version of ColdFusion that you're using, which is right here about the Tomcat version, about the version of the Tomcat server that sits behind, about the license of your ColdFusion installation. I'm using here the developer, the free developer edition. About the OS that you are using. I'm on, I'm on Mac OS version 10.11, which is El Captain. And also information here about the Java environment that you're using. I'm using Java version 8, as you can see right here. Another page of importance in the ColdFusion administrator is here at the bottom, the server update. This is something you want to check on a regular basis. So you will see the available updates. You will see eventually the installed updates. So at that moment, there is no update for ColdFusion 2016 that has just been released. And here are the settings that allow you to turn on and off the automatic updates of ColdFusion. Now, I won't go through all the pages of the administrator, but you might want to take a look by yourself at all those different pages of the ColdFusion administrator just to have a basic idea of what is available here. Please don't change any of those settings. We will come back to some of those pages during the course and change some settings later in the course. But at this moment, just take a look at those pages to get a first idea of what is available in the ColdFusion administrator. For now, I will log out of the ColdFusion administrator and turn off the browser to return to ColdFusion Builder and show you another way of accessing the ColdFusion administrator. You see here at the bottom of the page that the ColdFusion server is running. I can right click on that ColdFusion server and launch the ColdFusion administrator from here. And here the ColdFusion administrator opens from within the ColdFusion builder environment. So you can of course log on to that ColdFusion administrator using the exact same password as before. And you access the exact same website, the exact same interface that what we had in the browser. So let's close that tab here. And now to finish off with this video, I will turn off the ColdFusion server. So I select it in the uh, CF servers panel and I click on that stop button here. And after a short while, you will see that ColdFusion will be stopped. There we go. The ColdFusion builder is stopped and we can now safely exit ColdFusion builder. And this is how you can turn on and off ColdFusion Server on your development installation. In the next video, of course, we will continue by setting up the exercise that we will need during this course.